I became born again, and I could no longer reconcile my conscience with the fact that it's an addiction. It grabs you, even though it may not be good for you. It pulls on your time constantly. It pulls on your attention constantly. It's that little green monster on your back that you just... So I was in SS2 when I started smoking at age 17. One wrong visit to a so-called friend that particular time. And I started smoking and I kept on going on and on, on and on, on and on. It got to the point that I gathered with my friends and there was no matter the level of breeze, I'll put like four sticks or five sticks in my mouth and I would light it. I would light a cigarette. It, it get, that's how far I went. So every time I was, you know, smoke, enjoy smoking, that point you know to finish um packet of um, cigarettes. Uh, that particular time why I was not buying packet of cigarettes and keeping was because I was there was no way I could hide. Uh, a packet of cigarettes. We were not living in a, such a big house right now, th that particular time. But the point is, I kept on vibe, go with friends, go to different places. I, there was even a particular time we were coming back from school. The, about three of my friends were together. We, we took a part of they were playing. I brought out the stick of cigarette and I lit it. As soon as I lit it, one of the friends, even though we were smoking together, said, No, you shouldn't have done that because you are still putting on your uniform. So I was smoking, even with my uniform, I didn't really cared about but I felt like that was the thing you know to do and so I kept on going like that until some I became born again and I could no longer reconcile my conscience with the fact that I was being I was born again and I was I struggled all through life but there was a time in the church, my fellowship, I just finished smoking and I attended a particular meeting. It was a Thursday and I thought nobody knew and something like that. Thursday we were supposed to have a meeting. Then my pastor confronted me and said, Brother Oduak, you are still smoking. I felt really bad and I felt who would have told him I was still smoking. But the point is, as bad as I felt, I still went back to smoking. There was even another time I was you know, with my mother, you know, in, in a shop where she sells and I was at the toilet and she said, you are going to smoke again. I, I felt challenged, you know, so my mother confronted, my pastor confronted me, my mother confronted me and even though each time I had these confrontations, I felt really bad, but I will find myself another time, another minute, still going to friends that we started smoking together that became born again, you know, with me, stopped smoking years before. I could finally stop it. So it wasn't a question of whether I could stop um, smoking or I could not stop smoking. I kept on going on and on. And one thing I kept on doing with my new life, being born again, each time I smoked, I never enjoyed smoking. I always tell God, God, help me in this particular situation. I, I want to stop it, but I was I'm helpless. I can't stop it. Please help me. There were, there were times I cried. But there was a particular time I was going from fellowship home so i trekked and i just found myself i went back to buy smoking tears were actually i was actually tearing as in tears were dropping you know and sliding down my cheek and dropping on the floor but yet i did not drop that part do that particular stick of cigarette until i finished it and so there was this the urge to smoke kept on was was consistent but the desire not to smoke was really inherent in me. I had convictions every time I smoked. I had convictions, and each time I had conviction, for me to feel better, I would just pray and say, "God, please, just have mercy on me. I really want to stop this particular uh, smoking, and but I cannot help it." I kept on going like that until I smoked for a period, you know, of eight years. But the day God was going to deliver me, this is. I share this I want to tell you that it is possible to be a Christian and still be smoking controversial right but what kept me or that I believe I'm still a Christian or I was still a Christian that particular time I was smoking was because of the way I felt each time I smoked the, the conviction was consistent now if the Holy Spirit 
does is no longer in your life you can never have conviction but the moment you have conviction is another is drawing you back to yourself. I'm not saying that uh, my life was perfect, my relationship was perfect with God, but what I'm trying to say is that I kept on having consistent conviction each time I smoked. So what happened? I went, you know, the, the particular place very close to my house, then I was still living with my parents. I, I bought four sticks of uh, a particular brand of a cigarette and I sat on the fence. That fence, you saw, you understand that the, there was no hand of man in how God delivered me. That, that fence, when you sit on the fence, even somebody that is as tall as, as 10 feet plus cannot reach your body. Talk less of um, being able to reach your head. But on the other side where I sat down, it's something you could just, you know, easily sit. And so I sat in. Suddenly, I got a knock somewhere here. And the way I felt, it was like I was going to die. But I still struggled to finish the first sticks I bought. I ran home, I knew I was going to need help. Ran to the bedroom, had my bath, then called one of my sisters and I said, please tell God, let me pray that God should have mercy on me. At that particular point, I didn't feel worthy to call on God. And I know that is what a lot of us, you know, struggling with habits, the way we feel. And that's why you see that instead of moving closer to God, we we'll move further away from God because of condemnation we feel we can no longer call God in our particular state but what happened let me finish the story I my sister came and said why do you say I should ask for mercy I said just ask God for mercy for me and she laid hands on me and said father please have mercy on Uduat and as soon as she prayed that simple prayer I'm telling you the peace I never had for eight years while I had even though the headache was still there little it's, it, I mean, it's, it's suppressed and I was able to sleep and that was how God delivered me. That was the beginning of, you know, moving away from smoking. So, the next day, I went out. And the next day, I didn't go out at all for a period of 24 hours. I slept all through. And before this particular time, I had tried stopping to smoke for, and I, because I was counting, it lasted only for a period of 14 days because I kept on counting ah, I did not stay out for two days for three days until it got to 14 but on the 15th day I smoked and my smoking habit became worse than it was before so now fast forward 24 hours I didn't go out and I didn't smoke that was the first time I would not smoke not because I, I was doing it with my power but because I could based on what I felt and that's why I called that particular knock divine knock so the, but the third day, I went out and I passed where people were smoking. The moment smell of cigarette, the headache came back, and that was a confirmation that God was in what you know the new episode. What happened to me? So I knew what I had was divine, and if I had gone back to that particular to smoking, then I might. Now the truth is, yours might not be smoking. Yours could be anger. Yours could be masturbation. We've had cases where Christians are struggling with masturbation. We've had cases where Christians will hide, husbands will hide and go and sleep, you know, with her lot or have a side chick out there. And yet, some of these people are top shot in the church. That's because a lot of us fail to deal with the baggage we we had before we became born again and we brought into Christianity and because nobody around us has been able to see us or confront us or whatever it is then we begin to go you know in the church ladder and become leaders and while we are leaders we have a bit of important you are accountable to somebody a lot of us are not do not respect our spouses so that's why you see that we do n we are not accountable to them. The, if you cannot be accountable to your spouse, your wife, or your husband, then you should be able to be accountable to a friend that is leading you the right way. Talking about leading you to the right path, not a, Christ, a, a friend that will be and tell you you can continue, enjoy your life. And that is one thing we need to be scared of. So we need to be accountable to somebody that each time we have challenges, we can run to this particular person and tell this person, please, this is what I'm going through. Is if you fail to do that particular thing or being accountable or ask for help each time you're having issues you might have you might get to the point where you can no longer help it but you get into it until you know until that particular habit fishes you out and the shame is more than what you can ever bear 
And that is my message for you. Whatever habit you are struggling with, no man, no confrontation can help you. No consequences can. When you run to God, you'll be surprised how easily He makes difficult things move. To God, nothing shall be impossible. And that's why you need to run to God, no matter how far you have gone. To our returning subscribers, hands on the head. A salute. Thanks for being a blessing. It's been a great blessing having you around here. Thank you so much as this channel is dedicated to see you thrive in life, to see you happy, to see you overcome your challenges. This is your first time on speaking to this channel, so do not forget to hit the subscribe button. You can also comment below or give a like. It goes a long way in encouraging us. Thank you for being a part of this and thanks for watching to this particular point. God bless you for your good.